I'm here in the first episode. This is Daniel. Yes, sir. I've known Daniel for shh, 10, 10 years. 10 now? years. It's been 10 years now. Yeah. How did we first meet? What was that? We went camping. Camping? Or no. It was when you guys lived on King's Highway on that trailer. Really? Yeah. Was it that long? Was it? Yeah. Wait, you were at that house with us at some point? Yeah, it's a trailer y'all had to pull out back. The blow up pool? Yes, sir. With the sand pit? Yes, sir. So you were there, damn. Yeah. I don't even remember that. You was you was gay high. Mm -hmm. You little youngster. I would have to have been like eight or nine. When I met you, something stood out. So, something that I learned from you, shit that I would learn from you was something that I had never experienced through anybody else. My whole life, uh, I've had a lot of older role models that show me what not to do and, and where not to go in my life. And yours always stuck out in just a different manner, you know? Like, you, you were always able to teach me stuff that was meaningful on a different level. What I tell you, you could put to everyday life. Whatever you're doing, you could put the game and knowledge that somebody had taught you or you had learned into that situation. Capitalizing on what someone else told you. By the OGs though. Early 90s, that was the crack era. So you know motherfuckers was smart. Who, the ones selling it or doing it? The crackheads. Crackheads were smart? Yeah. You don't remember? Oh, yeah. I, I was born in 2000. Three. The crack academic pandemic in the fucking eighties and nineties, impressive. A cop couldn't catch a crackhead. Some real shit. A cop couldn't catch a crackhead. Nope, seen it. Explain. Cop jump out, see a crackhead, he gone. He running. And the cop just doesn't even. Oh, he run. He ain't gonna catch him. Can't catch a crackhead. It's survival of the fitness. You living in California? You living in gang infested neighborhoods? And, and motherfuckers, and sometimes it's not even about gangs. It's turfs. Like, you can't go on this block or I can't go on that block. Because there's consequences. So you had your own block? Everybody got their own block. Wherever you're from. So what does it look like for someone who didn't have a block? Where you're from? What is that kid that doesn't have a block? What even is that? Does that even exist? Yeah, they just doing far better off than I am, or how I was raised. You ever sold a lunch ticket? Sold a, what do you mean, sold a lunch ticket? Yeah, see, see, I mean, you don't know the struggles. I sold lunch tickets. When I went to school, elementary, they give you lunch tickets. Whole booklet full. So you would take your lunch tickets and sell them? Goddamn right. So you were flipping lunch tickets? Yeah, government funded money for real paper. So what did you do with the paper? Go buy weed. Did you flip the weed? No, nah, I smoked it. That's why I <laughs> smoke every day, fool. And food stamps. When you got paper money, food stamps, anything you go in the store when you was a kid, you buy a five five cent lollipop, they gotta give you ninety five cent back in change. So you turn government funded food stamps into real currency. Ninety five oh, cents at a time. That was to support my fucking mom's drug habit and alcohol habit when I was young. Mm -hmm. So you would take that dollar in food stamps, buy some for five cents to take the 95 cents that you could spend on anything. And go give it to my mom. You know? Did That's mom how the struggle was when I was young. Wow. See, that's a different and type motherfuckers of motherfuckers don't even know these days. What the fuck food stamp? I mean, you, you nowadays, it just come on a card. That really is a different type of struggle. To support your mom's dope habit? You fucking know it is. You knew it was a dope habit, too? That was the 90s, yo. Crack was everywhere. You can find crack on every fucking street in California in the early 80s and 90s. It wasn't just where you were from. You can find it more than you can marijuana. Real shit. And that's back when there was having that fucking mexican brick weed what it was like dry weed stems and seeds baby stems and seeds in the mexican brick weed no it that shit got you high back then, it though. did <laughs> <laughs> no it smoked blunts of that shit fucking i, I remember cat piss that shit yo smelled like cat urine but it was the best weed i ever smoked 
Real, it smelled like real cat piss. Yeah, true, you, true fact. Can smoke you come by that still, or you? This is like OG cat piss. My grandpappy knew the dude that created it. He used to come in a big old bag and then have a sticker with a cat with red eyes pissing. That's how you knew it was real cat piss, and it only came from Humboldt. I never really understood. Um, didn't you have some type of relationship with Mac Dre? Kind of. This was fuck. <sighs> early 90s right like what when he three four years before he passed away i think he was shot in 04 sad day he was shot in kc they got that song there's a song by uh j dig by digs talking about trying to catch his um, oh he was out there ready to kill motherfuckers kill him so on your story Thank with Kilo. On your story with how what was your relationship with or to him? Like what was it? It was at a party. So I mean, we wasn't I've never like we're not tight, you know what I'm saying? When he was it was just like a mutual thing. And then I went and seen him and Andre <laughs> Nicotina at the amphitheater in Frisco. That shit was lit. Oh, you saw Andre Nicotina? Mm-hmm. Wait, so you were at the same party as Mac Dre? Yes, yeah, sir. Sure. So, at concert and then the after party. So what was he doing? It's impressive how many human beings can take pharmaceutical drugs and come back be straight laced. It's far and few between. There ain't many of them. Because they're taking a lot. Is that what you're referring to? The amount that they take or how often they take it? Oh, you, you do a thiz peel? You're fucking... Neck hurting, back hurting. What the fuck is it? Thinking you free William fucking jump in the ocean and shit. See, you don't know. That's early 90s shit. So, okay, but this pill's got to be slang for what? Ecstasy or what? what the, the new shit, Molly. I used to snort Adderall in fucking prison, yo, and just clean my cell with a that's, toothbrush. Do you have to scrub your cell with a toothbrush? Yeah, I got so high off Adderall, I fucking scrubbed my cell with a toothbrush that was like this big. How did you get Adderall in prison? Because people have mental health in prison. And so they get prescribed Adderall? Yep. So they do swallow it and then barf it back up and sell it to a cell? No, you cheek it. So when you pop it, put it in the sound. Oh, see how quick that was? So they don't like check your mouth to... Yeah, would you? If I got it sitting right here, you ain't going to know. And then so that guy would hypothetically take the Adderall out of his mouth. As soon as you turn away and walk away, yep. Yeah. And then sell it to someone? Like if you walked up to the guy that had the Adderall. Oh, I'm not like, buying it. I wouldn't buy anything. It would have to come somebody, you know. So when you're in prison, like you're in a line. So if there's a rapo or some, some weird dude shit, he got to pay rent. That one altercation can completely transform your relationship with someone. One thing happens, and and you go from one thought process to the next, whether it be good or bad. You never offered to give me weed either while I was underage. Never. Maybe I would have smoked the grade A finest. So. <laughs> yeah, so if I smoked some of your shit, I would have been higher than dog ass. <laughs> Yo, mama would have been so mad. I feel like weed shows you the real in a person. I think it, the energy that you get from smoking weed gives you real feelings about the situation like if someone's bitching at me and i'm stone sober i'm just like oh uh, this this dude's not worth my time but if someone's bitching at me and i got weed in my system don't fuck even give you. a fuck no it's fuck see but it might be different for me when i'm sober i don't give a fuck but if i have weed in me and you look at me weird then i feel i'm like okay this motherfucker has it out for me but that might be because i'm not high all the time i'm fine the yellow brick road motherfucker high as a motherfucker what was the thing you said higher than the alpine uh, uh, high as a georgia pine high as a georgia where'd you Ooh, that's some old school shit yeah that's like four finger lid three two finger lid what, one finger lid what does all that mean i'm too young for this so the the people that end up watching this they gonna tell you if the bag ain't four fingers, it ain't an ounce. If the bag ain't three fingers, three quarters of an ounce. If it ain't two fingers, it, it ain't a half ounce. And then you got an eighth at the pinky. I need a fucking cigarette. You need a cigarette? Yeah. How would you explain prison to someone who's never been to prison? If you ain't never been in a fight, if you ain't never been fucking beat up. 
if you ain't never been checked, then you don't need to go to prison. And it's survival. It is gang banging one on one. As soon as you step on the yard, be ready. It, psh, mm. What what are you ready for? What what is the readiness? What is that? Because motherfuckers are gonna come and check you. They're gonna be like, What you in prison for? Paper check. Who you ride with? It's like here in Oregon. I didn't kick it with the whites like I'm supposed to with the race. They had a Cali car. They're like, oh, we bang Cali. Psh, sign me up. I'm tatted Cali. I got 707. I'm not finna bang some fucking, some other state's gang just to ride <coughs> or be cool. I'll whoop your ass and still be cool. I'll take a fucking black eye and still be cool the next day. Was there a lot of fighting for you in particular while you were in the pen? Yeah. <laughs> you know, like a hammer. What, what's your record? What's your pen record? I ain't never lost. How many fights, if you had to put a number on it? One-on-one, -on -one or, I mean, you talking about, is it click, or? Just in general. One-on-one. -on -one, All together? Any, any, any fight in general, if you never lost any fight, how many fights did you get into in the pen? One-on-one, -on -one, there was three. When it came to a click issue, like Cali Car or... You got the Pisces, you got the fucking Natives, you got the Crips, the Bloods, you got the Southsiders. I mean, five, six, but then they lock up the whole yard. Shit. First time we go to Chow, hey, it's all kosher, yo. There ain't no tension. I don't understand what you just said. I know. <laughs> the mother, the mother. I'm glad you but know, the, dude. But the motherfuckers that watch us, well, if you're a real motherfucker, will know. Tell them about it. Hey, all you casters, yeah, tell them about it. You were really on some street shit. Yeah. Guaranteed. I'm smart. I may be white. I, I'm from black neighborhood. Survival of the fitness. Mm-hmm. Fittest. Fitness. Fitness? Yeah. Survival of the fitness? Yeah. I thought it was survival of the fittest. Same concept. You either guppy or a shark. I ain't no guppy. Corn fed motherfucker. I got shit to talk about, but do you really do you need a cigarette or are we gonna are we gonna run this up right now? No, nah, I want a motherfucking cigarette, yo. Hey motherfuckers, pause this shit real quick. We be right back. You heard the man. We need nicotine, so I ain't smoking in his mom's house. What does your life look like without weed? Can't. Would you be in jail? Without weed? Mm -hmm. Yeah, zero to a hundred, baby. We keep me a zero, and I'm okay with that. So I just, I just want to say something for the cameras and for your audience. I was having my smoke break, and I taught youngsters something, and it clicked. What was it? What did you teach me that clicked? I don't know if this is the same point that you you were on, but telling people your plans isn't always the best move. The best move is to do your thing and show them what you're planning on doing after you do it. I might be way off on what you're talking about. You, you're not, but you are. I was blinded by something and got played. You know what I'm saying? You got played because you let someone know what you were going to do. That's right. While, while you should have just done it and I let should, them figure it out. I shouldn't have even said a motherfucking word. And that's what the streets taught you. I shouldn't have said a word. Do you Do you should have been so low-key, low-cut, like a crack addict. What's good with the crack shit with you, dude? I, I just, you were just around that, weren't you? Yeah. You were really around that. That's really how you came up. Nah, it's it just a, a figure of speech, man. So, like, if I was sprinting down the street hella fast, you'd be like, he's running like crack addict. Look like a crackhead. Run like a crackhead, it's crackhead, right? Do you feel like without your prison sentence, you would have ever got off the streets? I'll take this shit off for the rest. Ooh, we awake Ooh, now, baby. I Welcome. No, I just don't carry the hardware no more. I'm more humble. It's almost like poetry. And you, when you break it down, it's all philosophy. Everyday life struggle. Grocery store, work, wherever you're going, whatever you're doing. Whether the struggle's real or not, it's all in how you perceive it. What has kept you out of the streets? 
Freedom. Is it you realizing that you have freedom? Is that what it is? Because you didn't have freedom while you were there? When you went in a cell with a motherfucker for six years, the the very little things in life, T-bone steak, pellet smoker, a griddle, a fucking job, paper. You've never seen me struggle. I do what the fuck when I want, when I want, how I want. And I blow the best trees doing it. So that's the freedoms you're talking about is the little things that you... You know, just, just a little thing. Instead of that T-bone steak, what was it? A can of beans? Mahi, mahi, tuna. And it even says on the box in the production kitchen, not for human consumption. The food that they would feed you in prison? Prison, yeah. Not for human consumption? Right on the box. And you guys had to eat that? CYA, that's California Youth Authority. They serve that shit and Oregon. You know? So they're literally, they literally treat you like animals. We are. Not with freedom. With freedom, you're not an animal if you choose to use the freedom, though, correct? Isn't that kind of what point you were just making? I mean, we're mammals. We are technically animals, but I'm saying, like, we don't act like animals. I'm not in here, like, like growling at you and, like, scratching and shit. I'm an animal just by the presence in my room. In the room. Wherever I go. Wherever I go. They gonna be like, ooh, that motherfucker, he a monster. I don't walk in the room. You you don't think I'm soft. You don't think oh but some people he don't... a fucking square. He don't he ain't been around the block once or twice. But you know that a lot of people in this world don't even think about that, right? They're in a room with you, they're not thinking about oh like street. Survival they're not of the thinking fitness. about street shit though. Like a lot of people where you're from, people are thinking about street shit. Like you're in a room with someone and that has to go through your mind because survival of the fittest. But if you're in the fucking, uh, what do you call this type of neighborhood? Uh, suburb? If you're in the suburbs in Southern Oregon and you're in a room with someone. It's like, oh, I wonder how his day's going. Well, yeah. I there, wonder how his day a, is going. There'd it's, be a motherfucking bowl of fucking Snickers and fucking Reese's peanut yeah, butter. Yeah, take all you want, fucking, dude. It's not. Peanut Give butter me the M&M's and shit. Here we go. We got everything. This door guy. Exactly, bro. Exactly. And that's what's different between the way we think because like you just said, you're in a room with someone and you might think that they got to think that you're an animal and, and shit like that. And I'm sure people do. Certain people do. But certain people like me would be like, oh, what's up, Daniel? Even grandpa what's in the corner thinking? fucking choking on fucking cough medicine. I'm watching him too. Mm -hmm. Granny got a purse on her tummy. That bitch got a gun in her purse. I ain't dumb. Or does she just have Snickers and Reese's in her purse? <laughs> she ain't She's got like, that. Here, she got the fucking cobweb duster. <laughs> <laughs> like, no, nah, but she literally got a cobweb duster. Bro. Yeah, carry, swift, motherfucker. <laughs> there ain't no eighty-year-old woman carrying pistols in the suburbs. You don't. That doesn't. That is so unlikely to happen. But where you're from, every eighty-year-old got to walk out the house with a pistol. <laughs> got bars on her fucking windows. You know. It. Yeah. Yeah. Diversity, man. That's how you deal with 10 motherfuckers, all different personalities, but you're the same cat with all 10. Expand on that. I can go in a room full of different motherfuckers and be able to interact with every one of them. Not one going to shy me down. So what is your... You're saying... It what? could be a redneck, a brother. It could be fucking black, white, brown, purple, whatever the fuck you might be. You ain't going to think I'm an asshole. You ever met somebody that didn't like me? One person. <laughs> Oh, shit. But, no, I, I get what you're saying. You know, you got to act or you got to be, you got to be different with different people because different people aren't going to respect you for showing them certain sides. Like if you, if you walked in my room, you're like, what up, dog? Or whatever. It's like where you're from, then you're not going to have my respect like you were if you were to keep it cool with me. I, I walk in a room where you're from, and they're going to call the fucking police and think somebody broke out of jail. Is that a problem you run into? No. <laughs> but that's a concept. I'm 10 years old, and we're having a barbecue, and I asked Daniel why he has 420 tatted on his leg. And I was too young for him to tell me the real reason, so he made some shit up. Tell you, though, the second I heard what 420 was, the first thing I thought of was your tattoo. <laughs> I was probably like 12, 13, like, oh my God. 
Really? Weed. Daniel smokes weed? <laughs> no. Really? You would get fucked up. I remember one time you drank so much that I'm pretty sure someone grabbed your arm because you were falling into the pool. I used to get fucking tatered to your house and drive home, yo. <laughs> you would drive? Yeah. That's not good. Yeah, the one thing I stopped, or the one thing I never did was drink and drive. Because my brothers had so many DUIs between the two of them that I just never found, like, a want or, like, a need to. I was always like, oh, I'll just stay here or oh, I just won't drink. I never got popped. Somebody had to drive home when we was drinking at the fucking the last house with the pool. How many times we get a fucking tatered over there, yo, and drive home? That's a long drive, too. And I'm sitting there in the kitchen just feeding my fucking face before we leave. <laughs> when you drink all that and then you eat all that and then to not pass out after an hour drive, that's a skill <laughs> right there. That's not easy to do. I'm not saying it's a good skill to have, but... I would argue and say that when you smoke and drive, you drive better. I smoke and drive everywhere I go, like G.G. Chong. For some people that get the paranoia, like that paranoia while you're driving is like... Tug your ball sack. I better go the speed limit. And take a fucking real hit of a joint and you'll be all right. If I'm sitting there inhaling on a puff bar and I'm 15 years old in a brand new car, I'm going 55 and a 25 just because. But if I took two hits of weed, best believe I'm going like 22 miles an hour. Because I feel like the cops are behind me the whole time. That's new age shit, though. What do you mean? What was the old age? There was no vape pens. There was no puff bars. You either smoked or you didn't. And if you smoked, them niggas blew trees. Guaranteed. If you smoked cigarettes, you smoked weed? Yeah. What's the most money you ever made on one flip? On what? One flip. One flip? Did it, was I the main man or the middle man? Or does it matter? Doesn't even matter. 75 grand in a fucking box. Take me through what that was. It was impressive. Give me the story. I was at old boy's house. It was a fucking weed deal. Dude came through. He said, I'll take everything you got. And he was all, let's roll a joint, roll a joint. Bought it all. Old boy went to his car, came back with a fucking box, cash money. But you smoked him with the weed first. That's right. He gonna he wasn't gonna take that risk. Yeah. Would you buy a car without driving, driving. it for seventy five thousand? Fuck no. I'm gonna light that motherfucker. Oh, I'm gonna see if he can do a donut. I'm gonna see if he can swing him down. And if they can't for seventy five grand. Taking it back. I get played out of my time when I talk to women. Because no matter what the love is and what the feeling is, in the end, I wasted time. It's all wasted time. Every fucking time. Don't grab something you can't hold. Don't search for anything you can't search for. Don't grab something you can't hold. Um, you see what I'm you saying? You can't grab love. You can't hold love, so don't grab at it. That's what you're saying. Don't grab something you can't hold. Someone needs to take this advice and implement it into their life. Dead ass. No, that's a great point. That's a great point. Don't search for something that's not worth searching for. Philosophy, boy, I use that everyday life. But I put it in my own narrative on how I grew up and was raised. That's different from even somebody that grew up the same as me. Their, their view is going to be different from mine. But I choose to put it in a way to where the mindset is a, a positive, not a negative. Looking at life glass half full versus glass half empty. My shit always full. That's because I'm humble. If you look at it glass half empty. Shit's miserable. It is. And people still choose Even to if do my that. shit empty, my mindset is Fill fuck it up. you. It's full. My shit don't empty. I'm solid. My shit whole water. Because if you live like it's empty, then... You're not doing shit. Like, what Man. are you really doing for yourself? Even in the hardest times. Everything has to be half full. You can get a horse of water, but you can't make him drink. You can take a motherfucker to prison, don't mean he's going to survive. And a pond full of sharks. If I was 12 beers deep and I got in the front seat of a car, I would pass out before I could turn it on. Hit the gas, hold the brake, baby. Let go. I'm not going to lie, bro. I smoked you in golf last time we played. Two times in a row. Two times in a row, I smoked you. I got new clubs, new irons, new putter. You hadn't broken in yet. Pappy? 
Gonna whip the shit out of him. How about the viewers pick the course? Viewers pick the course? Viewers pick the course. Because when I golf, I'm like one hit of weed and like a beer and a half and maybe like a nicotine pouch. Six pack, ten joints. Daniel got me higher than fucking dog ass. Higher than dog ass, dude. I remember just getting out of the truck and grabbing my clubs, and I didn't even know what the fuck I was doing. I was looking at him, and he's like... I remember walking up to... I walked inside. It was the longest walk of my life. It was about 30 feet, and it felt like it took 30 minutes. And I get inside, and Keith asked me, uh, my stepdad for people that don't know I'm laughing all the way home. (laughs) Keith asked me, he's like, so... You smoke with Daniel? I was like, no. I go inside for like two seconds, wash my face, look in the mirror. I'm like, dude, I got to do some fucking yard work. Like, I'm higher than shit right now. I can't just sit here. I go out there. I have sunglasses on because I'm so fucking gone. And mow the yard, come back inside, take a shower. I'm doing whatever. I wake up the next morning. I go outside and the yard is just chopped up. Like, I just fucking was down here cutting my hair with scissors and looked up in the mirror and tried to get a good haircut that shit had long grass here short grass there there was dirt over here that shit had me gone bro should have had your weedies one hit off the select car we used to smoke those select cars too at the football games we used to go to spiegelberg stadium and if any teachers are listening to this then i'm just kidding people always give me shit for not partying anymore you know and it's like the same people have no vision they work a Nine to five and McDonald's making nothing. I just, I just I wonder for those people on a daily basis, like what? Do you see yourself doing anything else? That's because they're comfortable with their life. Yeah, they're too comfortable. They become accustomed to what they're doing. They're not willing to change nothing, and that's the difference. And that's not gonna get you anywhere farther. I mean, you can stay in place. Literally, you stay in place, but you're not going anywhere farther than that. On that regimen. Because your hustle ain't hard enough. You ain't been low enough. They haven't been to a point where there is nothing else. There is nothing to cling to. No. They they just stay where it's comfortable. They Instead of going like this, people would rather just go like this. Because that's that's what's comforting. A closed mindset. Right. And in the end, they end up like this. And in the end, other people end up like that. Shark, baby. There's a lot that goes into that. Yeah, and that's philosophy, too. My grandpappy, military genius. Nuclear submarines used to do it all. First person in California to grow dope and get raided. (laughs) So what was it like growing up in Vallejo, California? Ghetto as fuck. Better know how to fight. I got motherfucking big ass hands. I got guns. Well, my record is. I, I've never been knocked out. Besides okay. my mom. Mom knocked you out? Yeah. For what? I called her a bitch. <laughs> she called, clocked me, chin checked me. I went, well, bam. I woke up on the ground. I was like, no. <laughs> never call my mom that again. That was in the early nineties. You don't do that. Nowadays, I mean Nowadays people You get away with it. Yep. Back then in my my era, psh, you getting fucking whoop. It shit's changing so fast like that. You ain't touching you know Nintendo, you watching fucking black and white TV, <laughs> you eating cereal with no milk, carnation. Regular Cheerios with no milk. It doesn't get much lower than that. Punishment, Bubba. My brother made me stand in the corner, and I was there for a good hour and a half. But the whole time, this motherfucker was just laughing at me. Him and my little brother, they were laughing at me. And it's because I would be screaming my head off, but they're like, oh, do you hear something? No, I don't hear anything. Oh, what the fuck? You guys hear me? What the fuck? You hear something? No, I don't hear that. And... Yeah, I got discipline. And you know what? My brother Shane was was one of the only people to ever, like, put my face on the floor and be like, you don't fucking do this. And at the time, I was like, you're such a big pussy. I was like, And then when I grow up and I realize that without the discipline that Shane gave me, 
that I wouldn't be who I am because he actually disciplined me. And and I'll be honest, I don't think the parents shouldn't hit their kids. I think that it needs to be in the right situation. As mm. fucked up as I that might sound. I got my ass whooped. As fucked up as that might sound. That right? shit made me who I am today, Exactly. Though. Exactly. And that's why I'm humble. I should have died once, twice. Should have died? Yeah. You say that so nonchalantly. Almost died a third time, but it was quick story. So I was, what, eight or nine? Me and my brother, my real brother, we were up at Cookie Hill. We fucking jabbed sticks down a hole, and it was a beehive. So what, them bees come out? By the fucking hundreds, yo. We got stung so many times, we had to go to the hospital. What? Yeah. 108 fever. What? And survived it. You almost died from bee stings? Yes. Holy shit. And I was wearing a fucking Eddie Bauer, like a fucking wool prison blankets fucking sweater when we were kids. The bees got caught in the fucking wool. Because as soon as they land, they get caught by their feet because they got fucking, you know what I'm saying? So we were just getting fucking pounded oh. by bees yo it's the first one i just got my equipment in today i don't know where this is gonna take me but i have a vision for it and i know it's gonna be somewhere good daniel's the first guest on it so here when we got a thousand episodes 10 years later daniel was the first i thank yeah. you man i thank yes, you for real yes, it's been a pleasure um more to come i'm not gonna say that we're gonna have new people on but uh like frequently It'll probably be a lot of the same people coming back. Um, I'm I'm hoping that you guys like the content with Daniel because I'm going to get Daniel back. But instead of having him sit on this bitch-ass like couch, we're going to get him a king's throne on the other side. And I'm mark my words. I feel like I'm going to be back because people are going to be saying a whole lot of things. Oh, yeah, baby. You already and know. And it's going to be all positive. They're going to be telling, hey, I get the hate. The guest always gets the love, but I'm okay with that because... You know what I'm saying? I'm interviewing you. It's about you. It's not about me. I don't know. Like that's shit. Awesome. It's about all of us. Yeah, it is. But you know, if people want right. to give me hate, I, I don't like it when the interviewee gets hated on. I'm like, ah, fuck, stay away from that. But when I get hated on, it's like cool. Because who else in Southern Oregon gets hated like me? Thank you guys for watching this podcast tonight. If you want to call it a podcast, I'd rather call it an interview. But Daniel Franklin, my man, from seven oh seven boy. He shouts out what he wants to. That's fucking something I have no clue recollection about. You're from the 7 Oh, What's that song? Is that E-40? I'm not putting on for nothing. I'm just singing the music. He's on Mars right now. No, I'm not. Smoking some, what was it called down there? The Earl Stevens. Earl Stevens. That's stinky E-40. Showers. <laughs> that shit's stinky, bro. I walked into the garage to get something. I was like fucking secondhand high off the stench. That's a great A. Apparently... Top shelf something. You know what was funny? No, let me tell you. No, no, no. Hold on, hold on, hold on. So my brother had spent like 12 bucks on a little piece of cheese. And Daniel heard and he was like, what the fuck? I was like, what do you mean? He's like, that much on cheese? I was like, bro, you would spend that much on a nug. He's like, oh, I'd spend more than that. <laughs> you wouldn't spend it on cheese, but you spend it on a nug. Exactly. Some people like different things, man. Some people like cheese. Some people like weed. That's just how it goes. I tell you, though. Man, whatever floats the boat, right? Yeah, dude. Whatever floats Motion the boat. Motion of the ocean, man, floats the boat. All right, man. We're going to wrap this up. Thank you guys for watching. God bless you. And that's it. We get Bless it. you sitting on sea level. <laughs>